William Ford go read. And I was thinking about it this way. I, last night I was looking at the sky and all, and it, it was just, it just so happened the place I was at. I mean, it, it, was, it just had a blue to it, and I had to sing them up. Just it really was something else. And then I ended up, Pam showed me a picture of this and took it. And that one, it looked like the sky was on fire. You know, it was just so, I believe sometimes this weather changes like this, it's clear. And then I was reading a, a, an excerpt out of, from a book of a medical doctor that had uh, once been an atheist. He was kind of actually in the business of a patient that come to know John. He was talking about all the wonders when he got really looking at it. And they, you know, and all of God's creation, how everything it was that God was doing. Uh, things he had never, because he said at the time he came up in the 60s and 70s and all been uh, trained at a lot of the leading medical people, scientists were, you know, they decided that they figured out their science that there was no God. And anyway, through all of that, he, and uh, recognize and what he told about the, the testimony about how the, this man that he had met he was dying with him. And he was an oncologist and how that uh, it really spoke to his heart how that man faced it and his hope was in Christ. But the thing is, is just in, in the creation, something out of God. He tells us, and we'll leave it here in a little bit, that His creation does leave us without excuse. We don't know that there's a God. God is a creator. And I want to just look at a few little things tonight. And we want to go forward in prayer. It's all, always we got what we need to pray for. All those who need pray for our nation. So, mercy, but here in Psalms 8, he says, you know, he's, he's speaking here in the first couple of verses and talking about the goodness of God and the glory and how that he stood, you know, out of the mouth of babes and ordained strength. And then he said in verse 3, he said, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. He said, well, I don't consider it. Now, that means that I believe that he really could follow about it. Kind of like I told you about this oncologist, this doctor. He began to consider when he looked at God's creation. He talked about it after meeting this man and all, how he could begin to tell him how that it was, it was evidence that God is a very creator. And so the writer here, you know, as David writes, he says, I considered your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, the sky, the vain. And he said the thought that came to his mind at that time was, what is man? You know, in all of this vast creation, and when you do consider it, it's amazing. I mean, like I said, I, it just struck me it was actually what we're burning a little ball game with the, the green young ones. And I just, when I looked up and I saw that sky, it just really struck me. I mean, I thought, I said, you know, inside. You know, and I was thinking about what the, that doctor had seen. And then when she'd showed me that picture, and I thought, it's just, sometimes you look around and it's just this amazing thing. Like I said, out in creation, I see life and I see death because of the fall, but I see God's creation and it's an amazing thing. And it does, when you look at all the vastness of it, the psalmist said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? That you, actually out of all your creation, all the glorious things that God's created, He's paid special attention. I mean, even in the story of creation, he tells, you know, in detail how did he form Adam out of the dust of the earth and how did he breathe the breath of life into it. In other words, the Spirit of God. And how then this woman came, you know, from the real, out of the side of man. 
And all of that, he says, but you're mindful of man and the son of man that thou visited him that you remember. If God didn't just throw this thing out here and create it and go on and forget man. And I sometimes think about when some of the back at one time, I don't know how many there are around now, but there used to be some that were deists that basically believed that there was a creator that he sort of throwed it together and went on his way. And so, but here the psalmist is saying, I recognize that the creation itself is a vast, it's amazing, but he said, I know that you're mindful of your creation of man, that you, hallelujah, don't forget it, you remember we see that then as he sent his son. And then the next passage of scripture I wanted to look at was in Psalms 33, verse 6. He said, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the bread of his mouth. I mean, just by that very move of God, he created the heavens. You go back and read the book of Genesis, chapter 1, and you know, you get to thinking about it. And I really, I thought about it here a while back, and Shane was talking about that, you know, what was what day was it he created? The light, Shane, was it the... Well, he created in the beginning, on day 1, and then day 4 is actual sun and stars. For the sun and stars. But the thing, he was knowing the light, the light of God is Christ. He is the Word of the Word of the flesh. And I thought about how that, you know, he said it's by his word that the heavens are made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And in all of this, as we're looking and we're considering these things, it's, it's an amazing thing. We're considering Psalms 19, verses 1 through 3, he says this, the chief musician of Psalm of David, the heavens make a declaration of the glory of God. I mean, in Solomon and all of his glory, it pales in comparison to God's kingdom. The creation is His hallelujah palace, His place. I know that we have, as He said, up by the North Star, praise God, beyond it, there in the heavens, but God, praise God. He said, how, how is it that the, the heaven is strong and earth is as twisted? He's God. And the heavens declare His glory. And then the firmament itself shows the handiwork of God. Well, there's some good builders and good people there that can make things. I mean, I, I think sometimes about that quilt that y'all made for us that time. And boy, it's just something every now and then I'll get there and look at about different ones. And that's it's a beautiful job of handiwork. Well, when you look at the creation, how God created all of his deal. It's an amazing thing. And he said that day under day utter speech. In other words, he's telling you the creation does speak to us. And it's one of the reasons, I believe, we read him and we'll see the glory of God. He tells us, he shows man in his very creation that he is. And of course, as this daughter was talking about, he said, you know, with the training he had, he called off a couple of names, I guess, that are big in this field of science and medicine back at one time, and how that they had made these determinations based on their science at the time. And somehow another man's normal way is when he discovers something new, he really believes he's hit the ultimate jackpot. This is we got it all now. But of course he said what happened was somewhere a number of years down the road, the very science that they were determining certain things took place based upon those things, he said, I turned on his head because of the discovery of it. And it went even greater, you know. How how is it about the Adam school teacher? So they, you know, the other day when it started out, we knew something about it, then you got down to where you could split the atom and all the other mess that comes out. I mean, there is no finding out the depth of the knowledge of God. And so he says, you know, they, 
they come at him and all through that time and end the creation kept saying that oh, God is God is and the heavens has declared his glory the day to day speaks of God and night and the night showeth a knowledge of him he said there is no speech nor language for their voice is not heard in other words see it may be on the far side of this planet and me and them may not could have understand a word that we're saying to one another. We can look up and see the creation of God. All that we know about us. And that's the speech that we can all understand. That's a language that's discernible to each and every one of us. And it is one of the ways, praise God, that men have come to know God. I've thought about some of the stories I've heard of different missionaries through the years. And I can't remember the name of the one that does boys in the middle of, of Africa and there was no missionary anywhere around but how it was that God revealed himself to that young man and eventually he wound up here in the States, you know, and I believe up in Chicago at Moody Institute, I think where it was back just a year ago. I can't remember all about it, but I remember reading the story about it years ago. And I thought about how it was, you know, because he related some of the things that, you know, made him recognize or realize that. And so they, the heavens, they do declare God's glory. In Acts 14, verse 17, he said this, and in that passage there, we find some uh, situation, or it gives us a little bit of an idea of where we are, is what he's talking about here. Because of what God had done, if you begin to look there before you get down to verse 17, and he talks about that, you know, when they heard Paul and Barnum, or Paul and uh, you know, Barnabas from there, and they were sharing the gospel, and of course, the people began to envision they were God to come from the heavens. And of course, Paul went out, he began to talk to them about the fact that, you know, it was God that created the heavens and the earth. And he said there was a time in verse 16 when he suffered all nations to walk in their own way. Nevertheless, even though he, outside of the nation of Israel, they didn't have the knowledge of, of God in the same manner, but he said he left on himself without witness. See, there's never been a time, even when Israel was the chosen people of God, and it was there contained within that, that real knowledge of who God was, he still testified to the world. That he was God. He says here, he left not himself without witness in this manner, in that he did good, and he gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. See, God always says, How was it when he spoke about that Solomon and all his glory, not anywhere near what the flowers of the field or how the birds of the air are feeding? God throughout his our history, you know, here upon this planet, praise God, that he's made himself known in that he has given the seed. And we'll read about that a little bit. And we'll we talk about the fact of in different passages how that he has revealed himself. In that he, as he said here, he did not leave himself without witness. Though, hallelujah, his call had been upon the nation of Israel. He did good and gave rain from heaven and fruit for seasons. He made himself known in his creation. In Psalm 65, verses 9 through 13, the psalmist said this, he said, Thou didst it, the earth and the wood of it. The rain has the rain from heaven. Thou greatly enriches it with the river of God. It's full of water. Thou preparest them corn when thou hast so provided for them. Thou waters the ridges thereof abundantly. Think about this. Thou sellest the furs thereof. Thou makest it soft as shallow. Thou blessest the spring thereof. Thou growest the forth. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. Thy paths drop fast. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. But all of this, I believe, how we say it, the 
cattle on a thousand hills as long as it's all in God's creation. And it all speaks of the reality that God is. Hallelujah. He's the one, praise God. He's here in this world. The battle is also covered over with corn. They shout for joy. They also sing. I'm going to tell you what a joy. It's a glorious thing to think about. He, in the midst of all of this, God never left the seven out of witness throughout all the history of creation. And that very thing, we're going to read that in just a minute of the book of Romans. But I thought about this too. Right now, you know, the night one thing we're going to pray about, in fact, when I communicated with Roger a little bit today, I asked him, I asked him, is there anything? And he asked us to do this. He said, Pray for the folks in the background. So I told them we would now. Yeah, and so there are people right now, I mean, at this very instant, that's seeing a part of this creation that's unbelievable. I mean, the power of it. I don't know how many of us look any at it, but just the little bit that you can see already is a powerful storm. And it's going in. But he says in Nahum chapter 1 and verse 3, he said, The Lord is slow to anger, and then that so great in power. And will not at all quit the wicked. The Lord, the God of glory, the God of creation, hath his way in the world of men and the storm. There's one thing that I do know. Now I seen today where apparently one of the ladies on the view decided that because the census I read denies climate change that we're getting a hurricane. I, mean, I don't guess we've ever had them before, but anyway. And so the thing is, what she don't realize is this thing is still in, it's in God's hands. It's not out of His control. I mean, He's the one that created it. I mean, this whole thing. He's, he has His way, it says, in the whirlwind and in the storm. And he says so much so that one thing you can take as a believer is you can see that the clouds are the dust of his feet. God's still present. He's still there. Hallelujah. And so, in spite of a lot of times of what, you know, people, and I think a lot of times it's just, a, you know, I guess it's human beings and fallen creatures we love and trust and honor. And so it's a lot of it that goes on. But the thing is, there are people right now, and of course we're going to pray for it. But in all of this, it is evidence that God is. Romans 1 and 20 says this about it. He says, For the invisible things of Him, the creation of the world. In other words, He wants us to recognize that the very thing that we may not see Him, but we see, hallelujah, His eternal power and His God in all of His creation. He said they're clearly seen, and we do. <clears throat> I mean, we see the creation being understood by the things that are made, speaking of all of us. We see God's eternal power and God did so that He did or without excuse for knowing what God is. He says the creation continues to speak of His presence, of who He is. And so, I encourage us tonight that if we pray for those folks down there, that we pray and ask God for His mercy and His grace to be upon them because He does have His way in the world and in the storm. He's able, He controls all of these things. Under his power, he's now I think a lot of what we experience in this life of all of these things out of creation, because they one day, listen, the Bible says the creation groaneth and travaileth. Why? Because sin came into the world. What's it looking for? What's this creation waiting on? The redemption, man. What he says. Looking hallelujah. When God comes, hallelujah, to his people. He said there's going to come a time when there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And 
more creation in me. I can't even, you know, I thought about it a lot of time. Wonder we was talking about a while ago, you know, all these basic differences that we have. And we talked about, you know, with men and women and everything, it's all like it is. But they're in the garden, and I don't know how long they were there, but apparently, since they were no, they were without sin, Adam and Eve did first not. <laughs> I know you think that's an impossibility. Men and women can't do that. They can't not disagree. But there ain't no indication they did until. Amen. I don't believe that, to tell you the truth, I don't think that he was, there was no sin. They had the, the freedom to cheat. God gave them that freedom. But the thing about it is, there was no sin in nature until they failed. And they didn't Boy, that's all. But the thing is, that creation was there. It was an evidence that God is. And so, though this creation is grown and pervading, and though it's a fallen part of, of God's creation, Man because man affected all of creation. We affected our fall in the garden affected all of creation. Because until then, sin wasn't present. And what does sin bring? That's why you see it around you. It's death. I don't think there was one thing in the garden that was dying. I don't. I just, that's, the Bible teaches me that sin when it's finished. But glory to God, is coming again, hallelujah. This creation, praise God. One day, hallelujah, when God renews it. When He gives a new, it'll be a wonderful thing, a thousand years, hallelujah, He rules. And I, to, to me, it's an amazing thing. I thought of again today, the lamb, uh, the lion's going to lay down with the lamb. But I'll tell you, if you get them to uh, be agreeable, and there's no problem. I mean, even old, uh, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner will be able to get along. Because that's just how it is when God's present. That's the difference. That's why you'll find among believers when God's presence is real. They're just different. We got a different maker. But here in this creation, we look around and look at it. So if we pray for these folks, we're going to pray, hallelujah, and remember them, ask for God's mercy, knowing that he's the one, hallelujah, is able. Of course, I did say today, Sam had it on there, and I saw one fellow, they showed him running up there, jumping up on a seawall, a way to get his picture took, and the waves was coming. I said, well, I wonder what he'd do with them old roadways all of a sudden. That'd be the end of it, wouldn't it? I said, we shouldn't tempt the Lord God. Hey, some things you shouldn't do like that. But the thing is, it is. And so God's in charge, hallelujah. He's going to do. But the key to this, too, that we can hopefully encourage people about. And like I said, when I thought about this, this doctor who had, had a lot of education, and I mean, he had come a long way in his field. But he said when it come to that realization, first it was the weakness of that man. But he said he began to consider, you know, all that God done in the creation. It amazed He said it just made him to think about how, and he told a couple of the animals of how that they just need to take care of their young. He said, because what you see in man, all those people that deny the existence of God, he said a number of times he'd been in those the discussions and they'd be talking. And it's one of them I never told him that was real intellectual, you know, man that long. He said, you know, if uh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but I just commit suicide if it wasn't for Leas or Leas. He said it's, there's just no reason. There's nothing because when they don't believe there's anything but the peace, the same creation says that God is. And so when he began to consider that, it changed his whole perspective on life. And it changed. It's one reason I go ahead and tell you.
spend a lot of time in these nations when they deny God his existence. That's why you see the conditions that you see. That's why it's happened throughout history. If you went to North Korea, the only ones you'll find there that has any hope are the ones that work on it. They'll tell you that people are protected from their own life, but there is no hope. Because there is, as far as they're concerned, they're called there is no God. But I'll tell you something, the creation tells me that there is. I'm glad, hallelujah. But it does. That'll be the one thing that man will have to acknowledge, I believe. And I think, yes, I really do. For God to say it like he did. When men begin to question us that I didn't know, I didn't hear. Don't go for him. And I believe everyone that denies God, the truth is that creation continues to preach that God is. Over here. We want to do our prayer request tonight. So we want to do our prayer request tonight. I So 
please also remember uh, Kim that works there with me. I said it's going to have been a lot of you. So I'm going to do that for her. And Melissa, Richard Gates, and her family keep praying for them. And Melissa, God bless her. Denise Holden, she's still being prayer. And I'm going to go to the restaurant. She's still being prayer. She's still Tom Fleetwood, his family still needs him. He won't be for them. I'm ready to go right there and tag him. He's already doing about what he was still doing. He's still doing something. 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 He's still doing something.
Kim used to uh, Mama Harris and Jim Green and the Doug and Willie that the Red Tail and which time she was a good report. Terry and Pat Gates and Terry and Green, the Cold Ray. Y'all will. I think I mentioned it tonight. The Stephen Chaps and the dialysis. So please remember to pray for him. They're struggling with the difficult thing. I'm not sure about the situation of it, but they just go north of Tampa. So I don't know if they're going to go there or not. And we mentioned earlier, let's keep praying for Roger Stephen. He said he's healing, he's taking time. And I uh, told him up to the Lord. And of course, when he said, all oh, these folks that's going to pass this storm, has already been all the damage done, and all the people in different places, and then down to the Florida, I think. So, uh, I think I heard a while ago, earlier in the day, there's already a million people out there. And uh, so, uh, folks, uh, anyone else? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. And we come to the house of prayer and pray and seek your face. Thank you, Lord, for the precious word that we've heard and we ask God that you touch each one here tonight. And help us to realize uh, that there's a purpose. And the purpose is to glorify and fellowship with the Lord and give and pray and, and lift him up. And Lord, we just pray for these that have been called by name and we brothers called them out to, from the book, the prayer book, and Lord, you've heard these of the unspoken, and, and uh, these of the in-house, we ask God that you touch them, and bless them in a special way. Lord, these children in the back there, and we ask God that you touch them, and we were the teachers there, and we were the shame of those Joshua's. They labor with you here with them, and God just touch them and minister to them. And we pray for these that's in the hospital, and these in the nursing home, and uh, these of our missionaries and our law enforcement and, and Lord, all these, uh, Lord, we ask God that you touch them, that you minister to them uh, right now in the name of Jesus, yes. that you bind us, Heavenly Father, that we might desire more than anything else to hear from you. Yes. And Lord, we pray for these and others around the bow in this community, in this town, and Lord, especially those there at Fort Myers and Tampa in that area, we ask God that you just have mercy. God, that you just keep them safe, and, and Lord, minister to them, and that water is going through the streets, and just above all, uh, a lot of automobiles and things down there, we're asking God that you touch them and minister to them, and, and Lord, we just pray for the governor as he takes charge, yes. and, and Lord, give him that wisdom and insight that he needs, Heavenly Father, from you to make decisions and right decisions, and, and Lord, we pray for you and pray for them. And so many others tonight, we pray uh, for these. And, and Lord, that you touch and minister these fathers, our pastors and preachers and teachers and ministers of the Word of God. Lord, we see them falling away. We read about some of them drifted away and shut the churches and all these things because of the real We see the, the pastor that's been uh, 
uh, been put into jail mm -hmm. in the last few days because of just really preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. Sent 38 lawmen after the FBI just after as he was a criminal. And Lord, we just pray for them and their families yes. so many of us. God, we don't have to feel that sting before we understand mm -hmm. what it really means to us. To see a change that we're seeing right now from our, our nation. And we pray for our nation, our country, and our leaders. Mm -hmm. We pray, God, that you turn them around to Jesus or turn them loose. We pray in the name of Jesus that you find and raise up someone. Yes. Oh, God, that would love you. Yes. And love America. Love this country. Love, love mm -hmm. the flag and the freedom that, that we serve. And God, we just want to thank you and praise you. May we look beyond ourselves and see our Savior. I see him high lifted up and see him on the very throne. God, that we can understand it's all about you and not about us, but thank God somewhere along the journey. You have granted us in. God, that's something to be so thankful for these days and times. And Lord, tonight we pray for the Valerian and for the Shannon's they labor the God, just go on and touch them and minister to them and speak to their heart and help us, Lord, to hear that word. And not only be hearers, but be doers of that precious word. And Lord, we want to thank you for you tonight. Yeah. I thank you for my daughters and sisters in tonight. I pray, God, that you touch each home and each family right here. Tonight. These that's not here tonight, that they may come in and out and pray for them. Sunday morning, as those that start to come in the door, we ask God that you touch them. That you prepare our hearts that when we come to the house of God, that we come prepared. God, full of trust in and fully looking for you with a whole heart. Not take part. And God, that we praise you and see you move in our homes and our families and our children and situations around that we need to touch. God, we just want to praise you tonight. Thank you. And Lord, just to uh, uh, say again that we love you. But go with us now and keep us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs>